than you think you are. You are much greater than you think. There is some. The Bible says you have this treasure in that earthen vessel. See, a lot of times we live our life looking at the outer vessel and not acknowledging the treasure that's on the inside. Every time you look at something and feel defeated and feel like you can't do it or you can't come out, it's because you're looking at the vessel and not the treasure. Amen. Every time you are faced with something and feel inadequate, it's because you're looking at the vessel and not the treasure. Every time somebody make you feel less than, it's because they make you look at you and not the glory that's on the inside of you. Every time you feel depressed or feel like this is overwhelming or you can't make it or I don't know how I'm going to get it, every time you come to a place of brokenness, it's because you're looking at the vessel. The Bible says you have this treasure in an earthen vessel. Earthen. He makes a point in telling us that it is an earthen vessel. It's an earth raggedy, raggedy, wretched vessel. There's nothing beautiful about this vessel. There's nothing lasting about this vessel. There's nothing eternal about this vessel. You can put a whole lot of makeup on it. You can put a nice suit on it. You can put some smell good on it, and it still stinks. Mm. Because there's nothing good about the vessel. The treasure is on the inside of the vessel. That's why the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not because of my wisdom, my ability, my power, but because of what's inside of me. We spend too much time looking at the hour. We, when, we, when we judge our lives, we judge our lives by how much education we got or don't got, how, uh, who, what connections we have or don't have, uh, what money we have or don't have, uh, 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 what, what, what men say we can't do or can't do, or what somebody else has done or have not done, and we begin to level or we begin to value ourselves based on other people. We look at what, well, ain't nobody ever did that, so now you think you can't do it. But you got to understand that the value is not in the vessel. The value is what's inside the vessel. Amen, amen. There's something inside of me that cannot be comprehended. Amen. There's something inside of me that cannot be calculated. There's something inside of me that's much greater than I am. Yes. John the Baptist says this when, when he went out the, uh, before Christ. He said this. He said, there's one coming after me. Who is so much greater than I am that I am not even worthy to take the latch off of his shoe? He says, Don't look at me, don't focus at me. He says, If you're gonna look so well, he says, Look at the one who's coming after me. Matter of fact, when Jesus was coming out the mountain, he said, Look, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's one real than me coming after me. Amen. A single mother and not have the natural support of man and still be able to make it because there's something on the inside of you that when the flesh comes to its end it arrives up and say I'm greater than this, I'm better than this I've got something on the inside. Thank you. You can be on that job and people on the job have failed trying to do what you're doing but you can remind yourself that there's something inside of me that's greater than me and I can do it. Amen. I'm not limited by my flesh. Come out of your prison. Come out of your, whatever your prison. See, the prison is your mind. My God, my God. Your prison is your mind. And the devil will manipulate life to deal with your mind. Because he knows that if he can get your mind, he got you. And so he will manipulate circumstances and situations to keep you locked up in prison. I, I, I heard a, 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 a study that was done that says that a bird, if you lock him up in the cage long enough, 
that even when you open the door, he won't even try to come out. He won't even try to come out because he has been locked up so long that he has taken on his own mind that I can't come out, that I can't be free. And even when freedom is available, no, even when the gate is gone, He's still bound in the cage. Yes. Not because of the cage, but because of his own mind. His mind becomes his chain. Yes. What they said about me, what they did to me, what they said I could do and could not do, how they treated me, but that becomes the bondage that holds me back. Even when God says I'm free. Yes. Yes. Even when God says I'm more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. Even when God says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Even when God says I'm the head and not the tail. That I'm above only and not believe. Yeah. When God says I don't care what it is, life or death. He says nothing can snatch you out of my hand. Paul says I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. You've got to understand that there's something greater in you than what you see in the mirror. Yeah. If you live your life by what you see in the mirror, you ain't going to live very well. If you live by what you see in the mirror, you won't live very well. If you live your life by what you got in your bank account, you ain't going to live very well. If you live your life based on what people say about you or think about you, you will not live very well. Because people will love you one day and turn on you the next. Amen. People will lift you up one day and throw you down the next. If you live it based on what people say or what people do or what people think, you will not live very well. You won't even be able to sleep at night because somebody talking about you, because somebody criticizing you, because somebody throwing you under the bus. You got to learn how to live your life separate from what people say or what life throw at you, you got to learn how to live separate from these things. Yes. Right. Or you will not live Amen. very well. Yes. He says here, he says, having spoiled principalities you, and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in in what? In the cross. See, I'm going to give you a natural illustration before I wrap this up. The power of a thief is in his weapon. That's what gives him power. His weapon. Not his words. His weapon. What gives him ability is his weapon. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Come on, Pastor. Whatever they use against you, mm -hmm. they have a weapon. Yeah. I said that wrong. Whoever comes against you, they yeah. have a weapon. Yeah. Their weapon is what gives them power over you. What is their weapon? What is it that they have that gives them power in your life? Is it their confirmation? Is it their money? Is it them liking you, their friendship? What is it that gives them power in your life that makes you feel like you can't do it without them? What is their weapon? What is it? What is it that gives them power in your life and makes you a prisoner in your own home, in your own life, in your own destiny? What is their weapon? Satan's weapon was sin. Because sin brought condemnation. And whenever I felt condemned, I felt disconnected from God. That's the reason why when people sin and do something wrong, they don't want to come to church. Because condemnation comes after sin. And whenever condemnation comes, it makes you want to walk away from God. It makes you want to walk away, get away from God because you don't feel right. Because you've done something that you know he does not like. And so Man. condemnation comes to make you run away from God. This is the reason why Adam ran into God. This is the reason why God had to look for Adam. Because Adam...
Adam had begun to feel condemned because he had ate the fruit. It was the eating of the fruit that which was the sin that brought on condemnation that made him realize he was naked. So when God confronted Adam and said, Adam, what are you? He said, I am naked. Mm -hmm. God says, Adam, who told you you was naked? Who told you you was naked? Mm -hmm. You've always been naked. You've never had any clothes. Why all of a sudden you feel naked in my presence? Pointed it out to you. Mm -hmm. The reason you feel naked is because you have done something. You ain't had no business. Amen. That's what condemnation is. The reason why I don't feel like praying is because I've done something I, I, I shouldn't have done. Amen. I don't feel like saying it in the choir because I've done something I shouldn't have done. I, don't, I, I can't even look you in the eye because I did something that I shouldn't have done. Condemnation. That's what it is. It makes you feel condemned. It makes you feel unclean, unworthy. It makes you feel broken in your spirit. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, the first one, he says, therefore, there was now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. He says, when you come to Christ, he said, I take away all condemnation. Ain't no condemnation. You belong to me. You my child. I love you. See, the only way you can approach God, come out of your prison, is if you don't feel condemned. There has to be no condemnation. If there's any condemnation, you can't come out of the prison. Let me say it like this. The Bible says this. It says, perfect love, cast out, the word cast, is to drive out all fear. To drive by. Have you ever watched football and seen the, uh, the guys hit the sled yes. and drive that sled? That sled is driven back. That's what love does to fear. Perfect love drives out, pushes out all fear. Perfect love. What is perfect love or complete love? Perfect love is love with no judgment. Perfect love is love that has no judgment. When love is given without any judgment, then that means I can come to you no matter what. Mm -hmm. See, this is the type of love that we don't even understand as humans. Mm -hmm. Because our love comes with conditions. Yeah. But God's love comes with no condition. It is a perfect love. See, perfect love says no matter how dirty, and filthy I get, I can still always come to you. <laughs> the closest thing we have to that, or the closest thing we know about that type of love is between mother and child. Not even father and child, but mother and child. Because there's something about a mother, no matter how bad off that child get, no matter how long that child get, no matter how much garbage that child gets involved in, that mother will still look at that child and say, that's my child. Amen. That's my child right there. <laughs> No matter how raggedy and wretched he is, mama will look at him and say, that's my child. And I'll stand up for him. That's mine right there. Perfect love. Perfect love. You could be out there getting high, getting drunk, high, come in the house, stinking, smelling like weed, smelling like crack, smelling like the gutter, smelling like just filth, and mama bring you right to the table, sit you down, and cook you some breakfast. She know where you've been, know what you've been doing, but her love for you is so strong, so thick, that she loves you right in the midst of your garbage, right in the midst of your sin, right in the midst of your foolishness. It's not that she don't know where you've been and what you've been doing. It's just that her love overrides all that she knows. Yes, Perfect love drives out all fear. When I know you love me without any strings attached, I can tell you anything and you'll still love me. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. One of the strongest things you can have in a marriage is good. It's the type of love where you can be real with one 
enough. Yes. He can be open. I can tell you what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, yeah. and it don't change the way you look at me. Amen. Yeah. But I can tell you my struggles and my pains and my hangups, and it won't change the way you think of me, the way you feel about me. That's the type of love. That's the type of love that keeps a relationship together when you can be open before each other and say, baby, I got, I got problems over here and I got problems over there. Do you still love me with all of my... I know you love me when everything is good. I know you love me when, when, when everything is going right. But when you love me, when you see all of my wretchedness and my brokenness and all of my issues, will you still love me? Will you still care? Cast out all fear. I can be open. I can be real. I can be naked. I can be naked. Be naked. See all of me. When you're in a new relationship, new marriage, you don't want to be naked. Try to cover yourself. Hide yourself. Don't want to see don't want them to see the, 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 the blemishes. Cut the lights off. Yes. 20 years into the marriage? <laughs> you don't care. Butt naked, come out the bathroom. <laughs> My Lord. Big belly and all. Don't yeah. matter. <laughs> 20 years? You ain't going nowhere after 20 years. I ain't, I ain't got to hide nothing after 20 years. <laughs> See everything. Don't even take 20 minutes. I can be real. Keep it real, baby. I ain't got to hide nothing. I ain't got to play no games. Perfect love. Perfect love. Cast out all fear. There is no condemnation in perfect love. You got to get rid of. See, the prison is built by condemnation. The prison of your mind is built by condemnation. Where you feel unworthy. Where you feel like I can't do it. Where you feel like this situation that I'm in is bigger than I can handle. This situation that I'm in is, great, is greater than the last one. When, and you begin to shrink back. Overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed by life. You're overwhelmed, overwhelmed by stress. You're overwhelmed by the obstacles that you got to now face. By the hurdles you got to jump. And you feel like you can't do it. It's because you don't understand perfect love. Mm -hmm. And you have allowed condemnation to make you pull back and get depressed in your spirit. Feel overwhelmed in your spirit. Not realizing not realizing that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. There is no condemnation. There is no guilt. There is no sin in the life of the believer. You are free from sin. The sins of the old covenant have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the new covenant says he would not remember your transgressions. Thank you. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the letter, the, 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 um, the, um, what, what verse was that? What verse is that? Verse number uh, uh, 16. He says, therefore, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath day, which is a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. He says, therefore, let nobody judge you. Amen. He said, therefore, let nobody judge you. Don't let nobody or nothing make you feel like you by yourself or you can't make it. That, 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 that God that's inside of 
you. It's not able to give you the victory. 